Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hi, I'm Craig Conway and welcome to the Rovers Chat, the home of everything Blackburn Rovers. Hello Rovers fans, it's Ryan Hildred from Rovers Chat here with another special recording as we get the lowdown on Rovers' new signing, Taylor Harwood Bellis, who joined Rovers on loan on deadline day from our very kind neighbours, Manchester City. We've had the statistical analysis already from Joe and Andy that was released on our channel yesterday. So as, as always with these low down videos, we just love to get the view from the opposition fans who know him best. And in this case, as you can see, it's Lewis from the City Extra podcast. How are you doing, Lewis? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Um, bit of a weird transfer deadline day for us. Like, obviously, we, we had no business really. And then we just, um, you know, quite a lot of the youngsters have either left or I think we've signed someone as well. Um, from Rochdale, um, so yeah, more sort of like the academy side. So um, yeah, yeah, you got a good player in Owl Bellis, anyway. Yeah, definitely, it's one that's causing a bit of a stir on Twitter, and I'm sure you'll tell us a little bit about him as well. So um, yeah, looking forward to finding out about him on this. Mm. So um, yeah, let's crack on with it then, Lewis. So I'm just going to do a bit of the intro, and then we'll get into the thick of it. So we had a pretty productive deadline day, actually, and signed two really good young players, um, Howard Bellis, who we'll talk about, and Harry Pickering from Crew, who's gone back to Crew on loan, and, and then will be with us next season. Um, but the headline facts about Howard Bellis, um, he's a 19-year-old centre-back that can also play right-back. Um, come right through your academy structure from age six, which I was quite surprised to see that when I read up about that. So he's probably going to be the first of this crop, isn't he, that get tapped up really early and go right through. Mm. No league appearances for him just yet, but he's made the six um, appearances in the FA Cup, Champions League and, and the League Cup as well. But he does have a goal in the FA Cup as well, which was good. Um, mm -hmm. And he signed a new four-year contract recently, didn't he? So the first thing I want to get from you, Lewis, is just some initial reaction from you about the loan. Because I came and yeah. spoke to you about Tosin last season, didn't I? And we yeah. obviously had Tosin Adarabaya on loan. He was mm. a real fan's favourite for us, made a real good impression, got plenty of game time. And I think that's probably something that Mowbray's tapped into with Pep, hasn't he? To say, look, yeah. he's going to come and get game time with us. So... How do you feel about one of your highest rated youngsters coming to Rovers again? Yeah, well, um, I think first of all, Rovers is, is a you know is a good place to send send some of these kids. Uh, you know, it's not too far away. Um, you know, and it is a, is a is a big club, a big big pressure. You know what I mean? So it's 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 decent. You know, it's a good place for them to go. Um, the Howard Bellis one, I, I'm I'm I was I was in two minds about it, and I'm still in two minds about it. The problem I've got with Howard Bellis, right, is. I genuinely think that he's actually mint. Like I, I do think that he can, he can make it. Say, I, I do think he's better than Tolson as well. Um, not like miles better than him, but I do think he's better than Tolson. Um, and it's basically, it's sort of a, you know, what, what does City do with him? Eh? Do, you know, do they keep him with the first team at City? You know, training with world class players. You know, Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden. You know, Raheem Sterling defending against them players. He's only going to make him better in training. However, with that. He's not going to really get any game time, you know what I mean? Or do you send him out on loan where, you know, with respect, he's going to play with lesser ability players, but he's you're going to hope that he's going to get first team football, which, you know, it, is, it does him a world of good. So it is a really, really tricky decision. I still don't know whether it was the right decision. And I'm sure the club was probably tearing the hair out about what to do with this guy. I actually, it's, you know, it's funny because when we signed Howard Bellis on the, on the new deal, which you just mentioned, we did a video on our own channel. And, and we said one of the hardest things about this contract is what are City going to do with him? What are City because he's not really going to play? Do they loan him out or do they keep him with the first team training? Um, and obviously, only time will tell. He's got to play football for me though. If he if he goes there and he's not playing, I don't know if there's any clause where City can pull him back. But you know, I'd rather have him training with the first team at City if he's not playing uh, for Rovers. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll find that video on your channel and we'll retweet it. I'm sure Rovers fans will love to see the insight that you did on him at the point he signed the new contract. So you mm -hmm. know, once this one goes out, we'll do a little retweet on that. So just touching yeah. on some of the things you said then, Lewis, um, Pep's been in the press on Tuesday uh, in the Manchester Evening News. 
Uh, and this is what he's had to say. Um, he'll play in a good competition at a good historical team. He'll play real opponents. The academy is good for a short time, but needs to grow as a player. And he doesn't have many minutes here in the first team. He's had two seasons training with us. There are other young lads training in their first season. This is the best way to see him in a good competition. Yeah. Um, so what are you, um, you know, just going a bit further then, you know, Pep's clearly going for the minutes playing in the competition there. Yeah, is that yeah. kind of the main thing you want out of this deal? You know, like we're seeing with Harvey Elliott, yeah. he's pretty much playing every game. Is that what you mm. want to be seeing with this player? It, yeah, it, it has to be. It has to be because, you know, he's... He doesn't get that many minutes at City, but he would he would get some minutes, you know what I mean? He might come on as a sub era there in like a cup match or whatever. And, um, you know, he's travelling with Champions League squads, you know, whether he's in the match day squad, he's still going, you know what I mean? That that for a 19, 20 year old, whatever he is, that's huge. You know what I mean? Going over to, I don't know, it could be anywhere, Ukraine, you know, imagine, imagine the experience that he'll get from that. So even though he's not playing, and this is what I just referred back to, even though he's not playing for City, you know, he's still becoming a better player for training with these players and going on these European trips and that. So when he's going to Rovers, I'm pretty sure that the, the club City have spoken to Rovers and said, look, if you're taking him, you know, you, you've got to play. We've had far too many players in the past go out on loan and they've literally never played for the club. And it's just a complete waste of time. It's not good for us. It's not good for them. and It's not good for the player. So I'm pretty sure City now are starting to get a bit clued up on this. And, and yeah, I, I do think he'll play. I, I don't know what your centre backs are like at the moment if they're doing good or not. But I'm sure if he gets the opportunity, I'm sure he will impress. Because for me, I, I I do think he's got you know top top class ability, and you know I'm excited to see what he does. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna tune into some of these Rovers games when he plays because actually I back him. You know what I mean? I'm gonna say it here. I do back him. I think you I think you'll be surprised how good he is. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Man City have put something into the contract. Harvey Elliott mm. clearly has something in his contract and his loan agreement with Rovers. He's been playing, you know, pretty much 90 minutes all the time. He's only come off a couple of times. So I'm sure mm. Pep and City have been quite firm with Rovers on that one. So I think you'll get to see him definitely. Um, City defensively this season then, Lewis, um, you know, really, really tight, particularly in the recent games. Um, I've got Diaz in my dream team, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> um <laughs> Laporte and Diaz are your big money signings. John Stones really improved this season. And then you've obviously got Nathan Ake as well. But I've seen phrases going about on Twitter about Howard Bellis, that he's a young Vincent company, the next Vincent company. That's mm -hmm. really, really high praise, isn't it? So what is the view and expectation in the future about Howard Bellis? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I did, I did an interview with, uh, is it Lanks Live? I think it's a paper. Yeah, Jacob. Um, yeah, yeah, Jacob, and I gave him the quote. <laughs> He's the next Vincent company, so uh, yeah, that was probably my fault. That uh, put put a bit too much pressure on him there. Um, but yeah, honestly, I I can't I can't I think he's I think he's top class. I've seen him a few times, right? And I always thought Eric Garcia was a good footballer, and he is a good footballer. But if and he's done all right in the Premier League, you know what I mean? He's he's not really done any mistakes at City. He's pretty he's pretty calm at the back. He's not. I don't think he's as suited to the Premier League um, and English football as Howard Bellis. Howard Bellis is a bit more physicality about him. All right, he's not quite as good on the ball as Eric Garcia. You know what I mean? But I don't think he needs to be that that level of. Uh, you know, I think he's he's got a good level on the ball. So if Rovers are playing out from the back, um, you know, he will be able to join in and that, and you know, you won't be crapping yourself every time he gets the ball. But at the same time, he does have that physicality about him. So. He's got a nice blend. I do think that he's actually better suited to the English football than Eric Garcia was. And Eric Garcia's done all right. And now he's going to Barcelona. So, I mean. Yeah, we'll see what happens to that. So, let's get into Howard Bellis then, just as a player and a bit of detail then. And I appreciate he's only played, you know, six top level games. And, you know, yeah, you're yeah, probably yeah. going to be basing this more on the academy. Um some of the initial commentary and analysis that I've seen, some of the bits that I've seen, and, you know, some of the websites and, and Twitter and things like that. Says he's a player kind of in the same mould as Tosin, although you've come out and said he's a better player than Tosin. I think um, so. Mm. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about, you know, you've just touched on the physicality, but what's his defensive style? If you had to liken him to someone, what's he like as a player? Yeah, he, he, he likes to get involved, you know what I mean? And, and that's one thing that I, I always was a bit quite surprised about with Tosin whenever I saw Tosin I don't know if he changed when he was at, was at Rovers but whenever I saw him in the academy even though he was a massive guy you know he, he kind of didn't really get stuck in you know what I mean and I, I, there was times when I was like get get in there you know what I mean if you put put your body in there you'll you'll knock him off the ball you're twice the size he never really used that to his advantage I don't know why um Howell Bellis he's probably a little bit smaller 
but he he, he he likes to tackle, he likes to get involved, very physical. I, honestly, I just think he's got an all round, you know, you know, good good quality, and uh, I think he'll I think he'll do very very well. You know, what I mean, one thing I would say is you did mention um, in the introduction that you know he can play right back. He has played right back a few times. What I've seen, I don't I don't think he suits that role particularly mm. well. I've seen that a few times, and if if he if he gets slots in like that right, I think actually he played there. In a, in a Premier League, not, you said he not played a Premier League game. It must have been a cup match. I think he played there. He come on as a sub or played there or something. And he didn't do very well there. And I think he played a couple of weeks ago at right back as well. Again, only for 20 minutes, but again, didn't really look comfortable. Um, I'd say, yeah, if, avoid that situation if you can. Get him in the middle. Uh, I think that's where his best, uh, his best position is. That's my only element of doubt with the deal because we have got Jared Branthwaite on loan from Everton as well. And I'm sure... Everton have done exactly the same as Liverpool and Man City and said, we want him playing. So it wouldn't surprise me maybe if Mowbray did put Howard Bellis out on that right or we might see a change in formation. So we'll see. Mm. Hopefully we see him as a centre-back based on you know what you're saying there. Um, and Mowbray over the last couple of seasons in particular, Lewis, has really evolved our style of play to be a bit more possession-based, um, mm. which does include our centre-backs receiving the ball. You know, if we're not penetrating teams in front of us, the centre-backs will get it back again. And last yeah. season from Tosin, we saw some really good mid to long range passing out from the back through to the likes of Bradley Dack before he had his injury. So we're going to see that from Howard Bellis. Are we going to see him comfortable on the ball? Are we going to see that type of passing or is it going to be something a bit different? Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit different um, from what I've seen of him. Yeah, there's not... I... I I can't recall, you know, noticing him pinging balls, you know what I mean, switching the play massively, you know what I mean? Not to say he can't do it or he's not done it, I just can't recall that being like something that I've gone, oh, he's got that he's got that in his lock, you know what I mean? I, I've always noticed the sort of physical side um, and the fact that he is decent on the ball, like I say, he's not at the top level and, and, and it'll be interesting actually to know, when he's playing on a regular basis, is, is, it'll be interesting to know from Rovers fans whether they think he's better than Tolson on the ball. I don't know if he's better than Tolson on the ball, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, only time will tell and I think you have to watch him a little bit more but he is, he is good on the ball and he won't look out of place if you are playing out the back you know we've had I remember when we had Julian Lescott playing at centre back and we was playing out you know, out of the back with Julian Lescott at centre back and that was not a nice sight you know what I mean he's not he's not like that you know what I mean he's, he's better than that um, but he's no Gerard PK if you know what I'm saying no, I do. And, and Tosin, I think, will be a good gauge, actually, because at times he was horizontal the way he was playing football, just never seemed under pressure when he was on the ball and so calm. So that'll mm. be a good measure, actually, and, and one that's obviously recent in the memory for Rovers. Um, mm. So, Lewis, you've talked about um, his physicality. You know, it's all well and good us talking about how good they are on the ball and things like that. But, you know, let's remember the traditional qualities of a defender. You've got to be able to defend. So yeah. you've spoken about his physicality. What's he like in the tackle? What's he like in the air? Yeah, well, like I say, in the air, he, he he likes to get involved. You know what I mean? And 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 this is what I say: it'll be interesting to see the comparison of, of him getting properly stuck in against you know players who will be a lot older than him. Um, who, who will probably think as well. You you'll be playing against some strikers who probably you know in the thirties, and they'll probably target him. You know, if he's starting, they'll, they'll probably go. I'm going to target this guy. What is he? Eighteen or nineteen? I forget how old he is. Nineteen, yeah, nineteen. Yeah. So that, if I if I was a striker, you know, I'd be targeting him. So he's going to have that to deal with. Um, and and it's, it's up to him to to, to, to show that he's, he's ready for it. He's ready for the... It's all, it's all well and good me saying, oh, yeah, he's, he's physical and that. But you got to remember, most of the times I've seen him, he's playing against 16-year-olds, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit different. He's got a... It's a massive, massive challenge for him. It's a huge challenge. And it's probably the, you know, the biggest challenge of any sort of player's career in this. I believe that this part of your career is an 18-year-old to 20. Probably the hardest part of your career. It's probably what's defined you. And it tells you what sort of level that you're going to be at. Yeah, I think he's, he's he's got it. If he if he get puts in the work, right, and then he listens to Tony Mowbray, who, who from what I've heard, this guy is he's good at developing young players. I'm sure he'll do well. But it's it's he's not. He, I don't know what the facilities are like at Rovers. That's another thing that he's going to have to overcome. You know what I mean? Will he have everything laid down the plate like he does at City? There's loads of different things that we've not even spoken about yet, which might eat, which might affect his performances, affect his sort of. He's training. There's just loads of things that he's going to have to now adapt to because he's never been out on loan before. So, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a massive challenge for him. I hope he does well, though. Yeah, interesting. Um, well, just to reassure you, the training facilities are top-notch at Rovers, so that's certainly a legacy of Jack Walker. There's probably just not 16 people making his meals like what you have at City or whatever, yeah. so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Um, 
And he got the goal in the FA Cup, as I said, against Port Vale. Um, you know, what was that goal like? Was it from a set piece? Is he going to be a threat from yeah, a set piece? Yeah, nah, I'm pretty sure the guy tapped it in from about a yard out, if I can remember correctly. <laughs> um, I think it was like, was it last year? So I, I can't, can't fully remember the goal, but I'm pretty sure if you go and check it out, I'm pretty sure it was a yard out and he just he just tap, tapped it in. Um, yeah, there's... there's Again, he probably will go up and he'll challenge for it. Um, again, it's not really something that I've noticed as a sort of aspect of his game where you're going to go, oh, he's going to be an attacking threat. Um, for me, when I look at him, you know, you, you see some players in like, oh, yeah, he'll be good in the box going forward. He's min I just think he's he's just a very all-round player. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's probably can do everything, but he's doing it at this level. And I do think this is yeah. going to be a massive challenge, you know, for Rovers. And where, where are Rovers in the league at the moment? Are they doing all right? Like, what's the, yeah, what's the we're pressure sort right. of? Yeah, so um, ninth, I think we are. We could be eighth. I need to look exactly. at table so ninth. It's going to be massive pressure, guys. Going to be, yeah. yeah, you're going to be pushing for, you know, the playoffs and stuff. So he's going to have massive pressure going into the, the final stages of the season. If he's playing, you know, he's got to make sure that he can't make any mistakes. And yeah, it's just, uh, you know. It's it's a, it's a bold move from him, you know, because obviously he's he's had to accept the move, and he's obviously backing himself. He's backing himself to go th go there and do well. He could have he could have stayed at City, which some people could say is the easy option, um, but he's going out there, and you know he's playing with lesser players in training. You know he's he's, he's only young. He's, he's he's moving to a different football club. It's it's it's, it's a massive challenge for him. But if he likes to say, if he applies himself, listens to the manager, and respects the players that he's playing with, then you know there's no reasoning why he can't succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And when you are a player that's 19 years old, being loaned from a top Premier League club, there's clearly areas of development there. So where do you think Pep's going to be looking at Howard Bellis to develop his game? You know, what are you? What do you think yeah. he's hoping for? You know what, for me, for me, it's more about consistency. I think I've seen personally a lot of a lot of Howard Bellis and I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, if I've not already put this across to you, to your viewers, yeah. I think he's I think he's mint. Um, the, the the issue for me now is, and what I'd be asking for him is just saying, right, you go, you go Blackburn. I mean, they're going to be pushing for playoffs. They're going to be in some big pressure matches. Go there and show me that you can do it week in, week out. Because it's all good. Me, you watching you do it in Premier League Two and that, which is a load of rubbish. And you coming on and, and playing fifty minutes in a Carabao Cup team against the League Two side and scoring a tap in. That's all well and good. But at the end of the day, this is proper football now. You're playing for a proper team. You know what I mean? It, you're going for the playoffs. And, and they can't accept you putting in mistakes. You need to, like, and I think that's something that you'll have to learn. It's probably going to be a different situation. When you're playing that Premier League 2, which is the Reserve League, you know what I mean? There's, there's not many people who are fans of it. It's, it's, it's no competitiveness at all. And I, that's, that's going to be another challenge. He's going to have to be going into the dressing room every game. Every single game is going to... I, I'd treat, if I was him, I'd treat every single game at Blackburn as a cup final. You know what I mean? Like, and and yeah. almost as if it's like, it could be the last game of your career. Go out there and put everything out there and don't come in with any regrets. You know what I mean? Yeah, and as you say, with if we are in the playoff mix come the end of the season and there are those pressure games, you know, City seem to have pressure on most of their games because that title race is so tight and because the Champions mm. League is still itching for that trophy, aren't you? So this is all good for his mentality and, and good for his temperament, yeah. isn't it, going forward if, if he is going to be part of your first team setup, So, no, it feels good. And then just... Um, to go back slightly onto one thing, um, I think you've clearly said that right back possibly isn't a position that we should be trying him out. Um, the other talk that we've had within the fan base, because we've made that link between Branthwaite, Everton will want minutes for him, Howard Bellis, City are going to want minutes for him, and we've already got Daryl Ennian, who's the captain. Do you think Howard Bellis would slot easily into a back three? Um, you know, three centre backs and then the wing backs in front. Uh, yeah, I, I'd never seen him in a back three, um, so I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't say, um, you know, when, when as fans we're like back, you know, back four, back three, back five, whatever, you know, what I mean, it's, you, you're still doing the same thing, you're still defending, but you know, I remember actually um, when we had Mancini and he, at the end of his, I think it was at the end of his sort of time at City, he used to revert back to, to a back three slash back five um, quite often. Most of the time, it went badly wrong. Um, and I remember Mika Richards, there's an interview on YouTube where Mika Richards called out Mancini and was like, in an interview after the game, I think we got beat. And he called it out and said, nah, this, you know, this is a complete different system. You know what I mean? This ain't something that you can just, it's not football manager. You know what I mean? You have to properly work on it. And so that if, if that happens, you know, that's going to be another challenge for him. He's got all these challenges. You can see why it's a difficult move for him. And, and I say 
fair play to the lad, you know what I mean? He's not walking in a side here. He's going to walk into a team that are high-flying, who just need a player who can just slot in. There's a lot of challenges. You know what I mean, probably... I don't know, I'd be interested to get your take on this. Do you think this is a harder harder decision for Howell Bellis to go to Blackburn than it was for Tolson? Because it seems like, from the vibe I'm getting from you, this seems like a, mm. it's not going to be like, he's not just going to walk straight into the team. So I think for, for Tosin, he'd had the loan period at, at West Brom, hadn't he? So he'd had the taste of the championship. He knew what it was about. And I think he mm. might have been slightly older. He might have been 20 or 21, which does make the difference, you know, um, yeah. in terms of development. So I think certainly easier for Tosin. And Tosin would have seen Rovers in the championship. He would have seen what we're all about and kind of thought, yeah, that's going to be a good move. And and obviously I'm hoping that someone in the club at Manchester City has had a little word with Adarabayo just to say, hey, Tony Mowbray's a good manager. He develops youngsters. Go mm. ahead and play. Yeah, it's harder for, for Harwood Bellis because, as you say, he's he's been at City since the age of six, hasn't he? So it is going to be all those new surroundings. And mm-hmm. as much as we do have a good training ground, it's not that state-of-the-art complex that, that you've got with all the different training pitches and things like that. So I think it is a hard move, yeah? And he, he's coming into a side and a dressing room, which is pretty settled. Um, mm. You know, you've got big characters in there like Bradley Dack and Elliot Bennett and, and people like that. You know, he's going to have to come in and make an impression and, I'm sure Pep's in his ear saying, go in there and make an impression because Pep will want yep. that arrogance coming out of him, won't he? He'll want Howard mm. Bellis coming and being our best player. If I was mm. Pep, I'd be saying, go and upstage Harvey Elliott. That's what I'd be saying. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think he's got to go in there, try and force his way into that first team and then just show what he can do. You know what I mean? He's got the qualities. Um, like I say, I, I, I've only seen him twice two or three times at right back you know what i mean not not many times so it might be a bit harsh to say swerve at right back you know what i mean but i'm just saying what i've seen in it i've seen him there a couple of times and he, he's not looked great there to be honest center back that's his position if he can get in there and then just put in the performances consistently try and not make mistakes that's a crucial thing especially when the team's going for promotion you know what i mean one it could be a matter of a couple of points and if he makes a mistake he's going to be known as that fella and then city will get wind of that and then it's very harsh, you know what I mean? As football, young footballers these days, I think, got really tough, you know what I mean? In terms of actually, the amount of pressure that they're under, every yeah. every little mistake they, they, they do is scrutinised. And if he does a mistake, which costs uh, Blackburn playoffs, it'll, all, it'll be all over Twitter. City fans will get you know wind of it. It'll be retweeted. And before you know it, all the City fans are like, nah, this guy ain't, this ain't guy ain't. And that, that could be the end of his sort of lofty ambitions. So... I have massive, massive credit for him to, to make the move. Um, and yeah, if he can force his way in there, get in that centre-back position and try and hold on to it, that's the key. Hold on to that position and just keep on putting in them uh, consistent performances. Yeah, definitely. And I'm looking forward to him putting pressure on Lenihan, our captain, as I say. He's been at Rovers a long time, came through our academy and some of his performances this season haven't been the best. You know, it's not what you're expecting from your captain at times. So now he's got Howard Bellis and Bramthwaite two hot prospects from the Premier League at centre-back. He's got to be on his game because I'm sure if Mowbray doesn't see anything out of Lenihan, those two will be the centre-back pairing, which is crazy to think an 18 and 19-year-old, you know, paired up Mm. together like that. So good to have that squad competition, isn't it? So we're really looking forward to that as well. And Lewis, um, just as a final kind of question, which has come through in buckets loads um, on this this video. So (laughs) I think I know what you're going to say, but... You know, I think it's widely hoped and expected that this is a top loan signing for Rovers and it kind of reinforces everything that the City fans kind of hope and think about this player going forward. So I've got two questions for you. Mm -hmm. So the first is, how do you think he'll do at Rovers? Let's just assume he's going to play. He'll get regular minutes and he'll be a feature of our squads pretty regularly. Then secondly, what is your prediction for his career overall? Is he going to be long term in the City team and maybe play for England? Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure he's actually that good. Actually, <laughs> oh, no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm confident in what I've seen that if he gets in there, and and providing that he can just sort of put to one side the the the, the challenges that come with making a move at that age when you've not been to another club before, you know, i.e. getting used to the you know the different the different club, everything is so much. If he can get get used to that and get in there quickly, which which. To be honest, if he, his first couple of weeks, it might just be worth him just, you know, not, not even playing, just, just training, 
being on the bench, you know what I mean? Get, getting used to his surroundings rather than being thrown in. I mean, you could argue, just get him straight in there, get him used to it. I mean, depends how you want to go for it. But if he can sort of deal with the pressure, you know, which obviously no, no one can say whether he can deal with it or not. If he can deal with it, I'm sure that his, his qualities will come through and Rovers fans will be very, very happy um, with, with with the loan signing. And, and if that happens, then City fans and, and City, it'll be a win-win-win situation all around. In terms of where can he go, again, I think the next six months will probably tell us a lot about what, what he's going to do um, for the rest of his career. Based on what I've seen, there's absolutely no reason, in my opinion, that he can't make it at the very, very top level. And by by top level, I mean I mean City. Why can't he come in there and, and, and do well? He's got an all... He's, he doesn't have any clear weaknesses, not from what I've seen anyway. He's decent on the ball, something that's important now at top sides. Um, not even at top sides now. You see it filtering through the league. This is what Pep... Pep Guardiola has done. It's filtered through the league. You know, you see League Two teams passing out from the back. This is all basically mm. come from Pep. This is a massive thing now. Um, yeah, he's got that. He's got the strength. He's got the physical physicality. He's not slow. There's absolutely no reason he can't make it at City. And if he makes it at City, then England caps will, will, will likely follow. So yeah, massive hopes for him. I'll definitely be tuning into a few Rovers games when he plays to see how he gets on. Hope he doesn't let us down. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Rovers fans viewing this, um, extremely high praise from Lewis. Um, you know, that's mm. come through on the video that, you know, this is a player that Manchester City are really excited about. And like Harvey Elliott, um, you know, I'm feeling really lucky to have him. You know, this is someone who Rovers will look after. Mowbray's a good, honest manager. Um, and I, I really do hope to see him in our starting eleven um, and, and see what he's all about. And this is just another signing, which has proven that Mowbray has, has got a plan off the pitch. You know, he's he's loaning players sensibly. We're getting some of the best English and young talent from the Premier League just to bolster our squad a little bit. And, you know, it's reinforcing that young English and the permanent signings that we're making, you know, all those with sell-on value. So I think really fitting into that Mowbray model and, and what he's trying to do and, and make us a really good attacking young side. So... This is a signing that I'm really excited about, Lewis. So um, mm. we'll absolutely keep you up to date on how he's doing. And yeah, I'm sure that when we're on Sky and things like that, you can can see him in our starting eleven. So thank you for joining us and giving us that really positive insight into him. It's uh, whetted the appetite, certainly. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it has. You know, I mean, I, like I say, I rave about him. Hopefully, you guys will see the best um, out of Harold Bellis. You know, what I mean, it's. Uh, it's not going to be easy now. I'm sure it won't all be you know smooth. I'm sure there'll be some some low points. You know, what I mean, it's it's all part of becoming you know professional footballer. So if he can just keep keep the mistakes to the minimum, hopefully that the mistakes are not that costly, and then just put in some good consistent performances. If he, and especially if he's alongside this captain that he says has been there for, for for a long time, if he can help guide him through, um, then yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he'll smash it quality no looking forward to it um so rovers fans um if lewis has whetted the appetite for taylor harwood bellis and you've not looked at the stat show from joe and andy go and check that out they've gone into some real statistical detail on harwood bellis particularly in the pl2 and and the attributes that he'll bring so go and check that out uh so obviously subscribe to our youtube channel to to get that We'll be back at the weekend as we usually are with On the Other Side on Friday evening as we'll chat to Charlie, the QPR fan, before that game. And then pre and post match on Saturday for our usual live streams. And we'll see whether Howard Bellis makes the squad. We'll see whether he makes the start in 11. Um, so, yeah, that's it for now, Lewis. Thanks for joining us. You have a good evening. Um, please make sure you beat Burnley tomorrow evening. That will make all Rovers <laughs> fans happy and probably boost your follower numbers as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that was a big game. Nah, nice speaking to you, lad. No, I do, and uh, yeah, we'll give you the lowdown on Harwood Bellis. And Rovers fans, we'll see you next time for another lowdown, but if not, we'll see you on the other side on Friday evening. See you later. Hi, I'm Craig Conway, and you can check out my chat with the 1875 podcast on Monday the 8th of February at 5pm. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.